Hello, 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 and welcome to the demo of All Quiet in the Trenches. Uh, again, this is in early access. Well, not quite early access. It's still in development. Uh, so it is not a final product. If we see, well, prepare to see glitches. Just like the other demos I have played. That is normal. Uh, yeah, so this is not the final product. It will change, which is good. Um, but yes, so I'm guessing this is based off of All Quiet in the Western Front. I have not read that book. Well, I read the book almost 20 years ago. I don't remember it, to be honest. I watched the first two movies a long time ago. I tried watching the new one on Netflix. I could not get through it. It took me three days, and I think I got three quarters of the way through. So, uh, before and during World War One, mobile feed, mobile field ovens were used in the field bakery homes. One column had twelve field ovens and was able to bake twenty three thousand loaves within twenty four hours. That was half the daily requirement of an army corps. So they only gave enough for half of the army corps. Good job. I like this, but you're triggering my vertigo. Which, everything triggers my vertigo, so just ignore that part. Saturday, May 15th, 1915. I could still hardly believe that a few days ago, back home, I had appointed uh, under officer in... I've been appointed under officer in charge of this handful of men. In here, they were sneaking through the trenches behind me, not a hundred meters from the enemy position, with heavy back uh, packs and dwindling strength. Friends, well, uh, Wellinger was blonde, red-faced, and had a mischievous twinkle in his eye. Did he die already? Because we're talking in a third person here. Uh, Ferdinand Cumberbund looked small and lost. Reinhard Button had already made fast friends with his comrades on the way here and entertained them with his stories. Casper uh, Perdison was slightly stocky and was painting under his heavy uh, pack. Exhausted, we finally found the dugout of Lieutenant von Kersbrunk, to whom we had been assigned. There are, there you are, her, her autofacenter. Is that the rank? Yes, that's the rank. Uh, he greeted me. You seem to have taken your time. Surely you are fit enough to start work straight away. The lieutenant's con uh, condescending, condescending gaze swept over my men and then rested uh, praisingly on me. Uh, my men are tired or go right to work so this is a game where your choices will matter and if you have not read the books or seen the movies it's not going to be a happy story world typically world war one stories and movies are i find the difference between world war one movies and world war two movies is world war one is very anti-war it if there's no good in the movie, there's no purpose good to this war, there's no purpose to this war, there's just utter shit. Where World War II they try to make it look more appealing than what it would have been. Uh, I'm gonna say we can either go right to work or say retire, which might get us into trouble. Uh, 
take this one. Care about the men. My men are tired, uh, her lieutenant. Her mister. I don't know. Oh, I can see him. Oh my god. Friends. So, friends. I'm loving this so far. Morale, motivated. Okay. Uh, physically fit, exha uh, exhaustion, illness, wounded, healing. Their physical condition has a great influence on many aspects of a soldier's life. Tired. Continuous exertion and exhaustion quickly affect a person's physical and emotional state. Swift. If you have to move out to of cover on the battlefield, you should at least be quick to get into the next. Uh, very pragmatic. Fairly diplomatic, fairly compassionate, very sociable, somewhat cautious, relation, uh, respectful. He's born in 1892, he's a farmer, unmarried, no children, Catholic, and Gotha. What year? We are in 15. So he's 23. Ferdinand. Faltering. Physically fit and tired. You're faltering and tired. Exhaustion, illness, wounded, healing. They're physical. Okay. Uh, you are slow, attentive. Uh, in order to be able to react to a threat, one must first perceive uh, the threat. And clumsy. Mm, you're not really a frontliner, are you? Uh, you are respectful. Okay, there's one and twos here. Sorry, I'm just noticing this. I have one and two. Somewhat in, uh, intolerant. I'm going to keep flipping back and forth here. You have... Also, five, and you have more. Okay, so you are somewhat intolerant. Uh, completely by the book, somewhat patriotic, very diplomatic, very com uh, compassionate, fairly sociable, and very cautious. You are 22, by the looks of it. A uh, student of theology. So you want to be a priest. Unmarried. Virgin Munster. Catholic and no children. And Reinhardt. Oh, I have four. Um, you are physically fit. Tired. And relation neutral. Trust and respect are two sides of the same coin. They have a big influence on how a soldier treats me. Very tolerant. Very pragmatic. Fairly diplomatic. Fairly compassionate. Very sociable. And very, or fairly courageous. You seem really good, powerful, OP. Uh, you are also 22, projectionist, don't know what that is, my thoughts instantly went to a movie projector, but I don't know if that was a natural profession at that point. Is this? All? I'm also now thinking like a speaker, basically projecting your. I can type. Uh, unmarried, no children, Protestant. I don't know if that's part of that. I don't know. Uh, Casper, you look older. Physically fit. Feels clumsy. For some reason, this is over here on this one. That's gonna kind of 
throw me off. Uh, somewhat pragmatic, very unpatriotic, very outspoken, somewhat jaded, somewhat distant, fairly courageous. 91, you're the same age. You would be 24. Uh, a butcher, unmarried, Protestant, and no kids. So we do not have any married people under us. Or any fathers. I guess that's to make it easier to get them killed. Lieutenant. I'm having fun with this. Uh, you're physically fit. You're not tired at all. Were you tired? You were not tired. You're the only one not tired. Uh, you are very intolerant. There are attitudes and ways of life that are difficult to accept and do not fit into their own conception of the world. Uh, completely by the book, very patriotic, very outspoken, somewhat jaded, and somewhat distant. Oh, I can't see his information. I want to see if he's married and had kids. Uh, my men are tired. Uh, Herr Lieutenant, I objected. The train broke down. We had to, uh, to hurry so that we could. The Lieutenant raised his hand. Don't think you'll get away with your lazy excuses with me, Herr, uh, utter officer. I'll have to put that non- uh, I'll have to put that nonsense out of your mind. His contemptuous look pierced me. Find your sleeping quarters and then report back to me. In the meantime, I'll I will think of a sufficiently difficult task for your group to learn right away what being tired really means here at the front. Ah oh, shit. I'm trying to stick up for my bed. I don't think that's gonna work here though. Uh, I looked at my men's faces. They looked dejected and angry but also grateful for my attempts to stand up to them. Without so much as another glance at me, Lieutenant von Karsbrun turned back to the documents on his table. Welcome to the trenches. Controls. Click and hold the left mouse button to rotate the camera. Click on a location icon to jump to it and people to talk to them. The exclamation mark uh, is important conversations. I don't see any locations, but okay. Uh, the button at the bottom right leads through all the interactions required for this turn and ends the turn. So I guess I could just quickly push that button to go through like it instead of having to look for these people. Oh, there's you there. Uh, I want to move. I hear a plane. Oh, something about that. What was this? Tired added. Oh, did I add it? Change to relationship, Cumberly. Change to relationship, favorable. Okay, so they like me more. Uh, they are currently resting. Who are you? Pedersen. You're this guy. You're not going to be my favorite, I can tell that. Uh, why are we supposed to get something, where are we supposed to get something around here, or to eat around here? Oh, sorry. Uh, we only have rations left that we took with us. Where are we supposed to get something to eat? Uh, the current circumstances are indicated by attribute icons, such as weather or resources. So... Uh, we have two out of three. This icon shows your 
prestige with your superiors on the left and the mood of your soldiers on the right. Cool. I like that. Uh, the incidences of a turn often change the value of your soldiers. All recent changes are shown at the top right. These. So I made them tired, I think. Uh, change so you guys are happier. Uh, rations for a day added. So I'm guessing we have two days rations. Uh, our food supply in the company may be full and then uh, full and an entire kitchen companies are responsible for feeding us. But all this is useless if we don't send someone to bring the rations to us in the trenches. Do I need to do that? Okay, so we have headquarters there. Don't see any kitchens. I can rotate using W or A and B and Q and E. Low prestige, excellent moot. Okay. Uh, that was kind of confusing. So, what is this on the outer side then? If that is low, and this is high. The lieutenant raised his hand. Don't think you'll get away. Oh yeah, we ran out. Of okay. Uh, let's go to headquarters. Can I talk to you guys? Dialogue. I really hope the French won't attack. Headquarters is. Uh, anything here? Not by the looks of it. Okay. That's our dugout. Lieutenant. Uh, took you long enough. There's no time to get comfortable. Go and gather your men. A communication trench has collapsed and must be rebuilt immediately. You'll have to take care of your supplies yourself. Send someone to the supply depot for that. Assign a project to a soldier by dragging the his portrait onto a uh, project. Click on the rep uh, respective project icon for details. Certain projects have a fixed number of soldiers needed for them. For other projects, it is up to you how many soldiers you assign. The more, the higher the importance of the project. Excuse me, I got hiccups. Okay. Uh, rations. Exhausting. Risk of injury. Available rations increase. Uh, effects per assigned soldier. Double exhaustion. Risk of injury. Delay will have consequences. Uh, you are not a very happy camper in general and you're clumsy you're clumsy and you're slow tired and faltering um let's send you to the get that breath wow words just really went right out of me let's send you to get rations and then we'll send the three of you up here uh we're gonna make all of you exhausted i'm very sorry Nope. Double the chance for injury. And we sent somebody who's clumsy. From handling a rifle to applying bandages, many things in a modern soldier's life require a certain dexterity. Well, you better learn how to hold on to things. Uh, what do you think? How long will march... Uh, how long till we march into Paris? 
I think it'll be before Christmas. Okay. Um, so back here, I think. The Major is an impressive man, determined, orderly, and loyal to the Emperor to a fault. A textbook example of a Prussian officer. You should take a page from his book. Uh, I'm guessing I just end turn now. There's nothing else here, so. We have nobody resting. And we lost Russians. We have Russians for two days. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen this differently. I'm expecting the white to be good. I guess it's the black is good here, and the same with this. I'm expecting the green to be good, but the green is bad. It's going from top to bottom in all these things. Um... Characters. When you click on a character, a window will with moderate de or more details appears on the right. Under the portrait is the current morale. The morale tends to lead to positive incidences. Low morale tends to lead to negative ones. The valuable uh, values below show current circumstances, abilities, personality, and attitudes of the character. They can influence his morale. Okay, so you are still not tired. You are physically fit. Uh, you are tired, and I'm guessing that means twice. Uh, physically fit. Weak and two there as well. And again, two there as well, and physically fit. Okay. Hello there. Hi. How are you? So Q goes slower than A. Interesting. Not planning. I was trying to figure out how to go faster. Headquarters. Let's talk to Lieutenant. Okay, your group is on night watch tonight. Make sure your men don't fall asleep. Um, attentive. In order to be able to react to a threat, one must perceive the threat. It seems like you would be good to be on night watch. Uh, change rations for uh, two days. Can I send somebody else? No? Okay. Don't see anything new. That made me dizzy. Monday! A few hours ago, the roar of artillery had begun. At first, it was a quiet. It was as quiet as the rumble of thunder in the distance, but recently it had become steadily louder and more threatening. Suddenly, there was a thud, and not ten meters uh, from the hiding spot where my men were huddled, an artillery shell shredded the dugout of our neighboring troop. Pieces of wood and metal flew for meters, and smoke obscured the view. The noise was deafening for a few seconds, then died away as quickly as it had come. An almost eerie silent gasp of shock passed. Then my men and I jumped up, pushed aside broken beams, and searched for our buried comrades. We found two for whom all help came too late. 
a third, whoever we could, uh, a third, however, we could still hear panting. He was lying with his upper body trapped under the fallen beams. His face was distorted with pain, and he was barely conscious. My men stood around him, forlorn, and looked over to me for help. Cumberbund, uh, said pleadingly, we must try to help him. Together, we lifted the beam from his chest and only now saw the full extent of the damage. His chest took, uh, looked crushed and his hips strangely twisted. A long splinter protruded from his abdomen and his shirt was soaked in blood. Pedersen shook his head. He's beyond help. A mercy killing will save his... Uh, save him and us both misery. Let us put a swift end to his suffering. Get a stretcher. Yeah, we're getting a stretcher. Get a stretcher, I ordered. Cumberbrent and Pedersen. First, I wanted to get him out of the wreckage and then decide whether I would expose my men to the danger of carrying him to the military hospital. There, the nurses could determine whether and how to help him. You're still not tired. How are you not tired? You're not tired either. You are. And so are you. Okay, well, let's send you. Um... Uh, Okay, we got a few things going here. Uh, we hardly have anything to eat, left to eat. Someone urgently needs to get supplies from the camp. Otherwise, we won't have anything for tomorrow, or by tomorrow. Okay. What do you want us to do? Uh, the artillery must have destroyed one of our telephone lines. Instruct one of your men to carry this message to the command post immediately. It looks like the French are planning on attack. Uh, planning an attack, and we urgently need more men. I need more men. Crap. Okay, so we have one day's worth of food. Uh, skirmish. Follies are exa exa. Uh, volleys are exchanged regularly. It may not, it may not quite be a real battle, but it's still very prudent to keep one's head down under these circ circumstances. Whew, excuse me, I had a yawn there. Uh, tired, removed, good. Grimish added. Yeah, we lost a ration. Okay. Um. Deliver message. Who was quick? You're quick. You are going to deliver this message. Uh, who is strong? You are strong. You are not. You are strong. Um, I am going to send... You to get... Rations... Does that change there? Nope, nothing there changed. Uh, bets per assigned soldier, available ration increase. And you two are going to take this guy back to the hospital. Oh. Uh, the advanced employment emplacement has been destroyed by artillery. Now we're missing a well covered position there and the French have an easy way into our trenches. I'm afraid that if we try to rebuild the position directly at the front line, the French will do their best to prevent it. Rebuild a place. Well, let's not do that this second. Let's see if we can't save this guy. Hope. I'm guessing the guy will be sent home. I don't know. 
if he's not, hopefully we can have him because I need more men than four. Um, okay, but I'm gonna put a cut in here. Uh, please leave any comments that you might have, and I hope to see you all again. Have a great day, everybody.